teach me what Greg cannot. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, so, for the last month and a half, two months, I've given you guys some missions. Right? Giving you some tasks and some missions and some homework to do. What were some of those things that we that we did, huh? Roxy, what do you got? Yeah, right on. Yeah. We we were challenged uh to be hospitable, right? Uh, the Bible has a certain, there, there's, a, there's a great deal of urgency in the scriptures for us to be hospitable to one another. It's something that we take lightly and go, oh, well, you know, one of these days we'll have you over to the house. Oh, we should get together sometime. Uh, but the Bible has a great deal of urgency about being hospitable to one another and that we make these connections and that we are hospitable to everyone around us and that um, our house should be like Disneyland, that you just feel incredibly invited and that we should actually invite people very important thing and so we've uh, we've challenged people to do that uh, what else yeah <laughs> right so we've challenged people to uh, to uh, write down their testimonies we've uh, challenged people to share their testimonies to make videos and so uh, a lot of people have done that um, one week we challenged everyone to pray and uh, we, we, we had uh, a lot of people praying. Some people were praying for the first time. Some people were praying for the first time in a long time. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was incredibly powerful. We challenged people to, uh, uh, be, to share their, their grateful appreciations about God and things that are going on in their life and turning those things into prayers of thanksgiving to God. Uh, we've challenged people to pray for their enemies. Right, so we 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 definitely did that, and uh, that was a big step for a lot of people to be able to to pray for their enemies. So we've had a lot of uh, a lot of different challenges, a lot of missions, if you will, a lot of missions over the last six seven weeks. And um, I've seen some real, really incredible growth in a lot of people. Uh, as they as they took on these challenges and as they as they carried out these missions, uh, I've seen some some real big growth, and it's a pretty cool thing to watch. Uh, I just want to get interactive for a few moments here. Um, for those of you who have been doing the missions and the challenges, wh why are you doing them, Josh? Yeah. So you felt the challenge and you felt, yes, I want to do this. I want to do that challenge. And then as you get out there and do that challenge, you're like, had no idea the awesome benefits that come from doing this challenge, right? That, that comes with, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and you'd be hard-pressed to say that we haven't seen, uh, in the last two months, a lot of growth out of Josh. Because you have. You've seen a lot of growth there. It's, it's awesome. It's good to see. Right? Uh, who else? Who else wants to share? Right. 
Right. Not here, anyway. <laughs> Initially, why did you do that? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Who else? Yeah. I started doing things. Yeah. So let me ask Mama here. So save the incident of of inviting someone without cleaning the house first. Would you say you've seen some growth in him? Oh yeah. Big time, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm not. I, and I don't. I don't want to. Um, I'm not. I don't want to like sound like I'm. I'm bragging on any individuals or anything like that. But I. I do know from experience. I'm watching Alan. Uh, grow a tremendous amount and to me this is what this is all about right um, and I know that all of the challenges um, and this is the mission that we're doing uh, I know that Alan's done all of those because I'm his neighbor and I watch out the window and I make sure that he he's doing all these things so as as he does these things he's experiencing an exponential amount of growth in his life that without this, he perhaps may have not have experienced. Do you, have, do you want to share too? Yeah, I mean, there, there is, there. I believe that in in the heart of the church, there is this desire to go and to do and to grow. Like we just, we get tired of the same old church and it being stagnant. And you know what? I've been going for ten years and I'm still the same old guy and nothing's changed. Or I'm still the same person. I don't behave any different. There is this desire to know. I want to change. I want to be genuine. I want to be real. I want to start doing some of this. I want to start walking some of this out. I want to grow. I don't want to be the same. I, I, I didn't start this to just stay the same. So there is that desire within us to grow. So that's absolutely. So when we respond to those challenges, we know there's growth behind it. Mm-hmm.
Yeah. 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 What do you got? Sure. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a, this amazing thing about God is he says, if you'll take steps towards me, I'll take steps towards you. And how many of you know that he has bigger legs than us? <laughs> Doesn't he? He has way bigger legs than us. Yeah, Josh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 absolutely. Amen, amen. This is cool. This is so cool. I love hearing this. You know what? I'm, I'm just, as Josh is just sharing with the whole group here, um, you know, he's, he's just preaching, right? And he's just sharing his experience. And, and my thought is, is that I'm hearing, I'm hearing uh, everyone sharing their stuff. And I'm wondering how many uh, churches across the nation are missing out on this opportunity to have these people preaching. Right? This is awesome. This is cool. I love it. I want us to think about, we, we've, we've, uh, wouldn't we all admit that some of us did all of these challenges, and some of us did some of these challenges, and some of us did none of these challenges. And so there are varying degrees of people who did these challenges. And that's, uh, you're right, you can choose to do these challenges or choose not to do these challenges. You can choose to do these things that are in this book or don't do these things in, in this book. Uh, that, that still is your choice. Um, but what are some of the reasons why we don't do these challenges? What are some of the reasons why I'm not going to do this particular mission? I just want us to think about why we wouldn't do some of these missions. Josh. Uncertainty. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Bill, what do you think? It's uncomfortable. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely uncomfortable. Yeah. Lazy. Yeah. Right on. Not interested. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Fear. Yep. There's definitely, definitely fear. Any other reasons? Yeah, Graham. Pride. Okay. Yep. Yep. So there's, there's all kinds of reasons. And um, we, we, 
we have some people doing the mission, some people not doing any of them. And at the end of the day, um, when we're not doing the missions, we are doing our own mission. And we're choosing to do our own thing. And look, we're, you know, I, I love coming to church. I love hearing what you have to say. I'm not really down with doing any of it. I've kind of got other things going on. I'm kind of busy right now. I'm terrified I would rather do something else. Um, and, and I get that. And those are, those are all uh, great excuses that Jesus won't accept. But um, I want you to ask yourself this question. Why have I asked you to do it? Strengthen your faith. Excellent. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, to be the church. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That might be a legitimate thing. Yeah, that's. Josh. Yeah. To, to help us to walk in his fullness. That's good. I like that. I like that. There's an acknowledgement right there that I need help to walk in this fullness. Excellent. Beautiful. Beautiful. What else? Yes. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yeah, right on. Good, good, good. To kind of break down the mold of our, uh, our culture in the past probably 50 years that these four walls are the church. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, I've, from what I've heard so far, uh, it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like I did this uh, for my own benefit. It doesn't sound like, it sounds like you perceived a certain level of trust that the reason that I was asking you to do these things was for your benefit and not for mine. And there's a certain amount of trust there that, that I'm not parlaying this into some kind of good deal for me. Right? That this is for your own benefit. Like, if you pray for your enemies, what do I care? Right? That doesn't benefit me. So this is not something where um, you, you have a certain level of trust uh, in what I'm asking you to do, this particular mission that I'm asking you. You have a certain amount of trust, and you go ahead and do it. Right? So that's what I'm, I'm hearing, that, that you, you don't see a selfish motive here. And I'm trying to find one, and I couldn't see one. The closest was that I could just be a mean guy. <laughs> that, that's... that's that's highly likely. So, 
Um, but no, I, 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 so I, I'm hearing a certain amount of trust in this. The, the question I have for you is, is that some of you have done some things for the first time in your lives. Some of you have done some things that you haven't done in a while. And some of you have done some stuff that you just didn't think you would be doing. And the, Josh brought up this good point. Um, it was something that you needed help with. My question is, is had I not issued the challenge, had I not given you the mission, would you have done this? You would not have. Right? You may have done some, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Mama would have never made a video. I can say that with certainty. So she, she, uh, she made the video. Yes, that's good. That's good. Some of these things you would have. Some of these things you may have. And some of these things, there's, there's no way. Right? There's no way that we haven't done it. By the way, my, my, all the, the reasons why I would do it, those are all great and good reasons. Um, uh, truthfully, though, the reason why is because that's the mission that I was given. At the end of the day, you know, while all those things are great byproducts and, and those are all great reasons, um, I'm actually not that smart to figure all that out. Um, as smart as I am is I felt like this is what God said the mission is. And so that's what, that's what we did. That's what we talked about. So I'm interested to know then. Had I not challenged you to do it, you say that there's a good chance that you would not have done it. So we can identify that you doing, and me issuing the mi mission, and you completing the mission, there's different roles there, isn't there? I had one role to play, and you had another role to play. Which of those roles was more important? Neither. They're equal. Beautiful. Yeah, that's great. They're equal, aren't they? They were equally important. We needed both of them. Joshua was saying, I needed help. I can do it, but I needed help. And so, l look how beautifully God orchestrated something. He wants you to get from point A to point B, but he also recognizes that you need help. And so he issues you issues a mission, and he has one person play a role where they issue the mission, and then another person who carries out that mission. And so that in order for that to happen, there were different roles that needed to take place. And it's a beautiful system, isn't it? And we can look back now and go, wow, God's pretty clever. What a nice, what a nice system that he set up there for that, for that to work. Now... The world would look at that, and if we looked at this through the, 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 our society's eyes, um, which would they say is more important? Me, right? Yeah, my job was clearly more important. So the world perceives things much differently than we as the church do. And they perceive this, this job to be far more important, whereas God perceives both jobs to be equally as important. He doesn't look at one and go, boy, I really need this one to happen without saying, yeah, but I also have to have this happen. They're both equal to him. And sometimes the world's philosophies creep into the church. And the church can go, well, that job is clearly more important than mine. If we would all agree that it's, that it's important for me to issue the challenge, that it is equally important for you to do the challenge, to carry out the mission, right? What if our church perspective could change from the world's perspective to that godly perspective where both of those things are actually equal? One job was not more important, and yet we recognize that both of those things were absolutely necessary. I want to refer back to uh, one of my favorite stories to talk about the Garden of Eden. We've probably beat this story to death, haven't we? We talk about Adam and Eve quite a bit. And uh, I want to ask you this. When God created everything back there in that first week, or however long time it was, 
who did he create first? Did he create the man first or did he create the garden first? He created the garden first. And then he created man. He created a mission before he created the missionary. And too often we're like so enamored with the missionary that we forget that the very existence of the missionary is the mission. And the whole point is the mission. And that we were created for the mission. Man was created because there was a need for him. God had a need for him, and therefore he built man according to those needs that he had. God had a mission. He had, he had a garden that he wanted to tend, and he had a relationship that he wanted to have. And in order to have those things, he created man, and he designed man to fill that mission. And so the mission came first, and then the man was created and designed to fulfill that mission. And then he said, you know what? You need some help. And he created a woman. And he created a woman. Why did he create the woman? <laughs> to be a helper. To help what? With what? The mission. The same mission. Then the woman was created to help with the mission. The same reason that the man was created to, to help with the mission, to do the mission. And he says, you need some help with this. So I created, a, he, he set up a, a way to do this where he said, I've got this man. And now, you know what? It's just not cool being alone. I, I just don't like the idea of you being alone. After a while, you you know, it's like mind-numbing to talk to monkeys that aren't talking back. Let's, let's create a helpmate for you that is suitable for you. And so he creates a woman, and, and he gives them their instructions and their mission and says, all right, this is what I want you to do. Right? Go be fruitful, multiply, tend the garden, take care of it, watch over it, and keep it. But then, somebody else comes in and says, I got a different mission that I want you to do. And if you just, uh, if you just ate of this tree, well, then you'd be your own person. And you wouldn't be under the mission of somebody else. Because here's the, here's the taboo word that our society does not like to talk about. Here's the taboo word that our society is, is very nervous when we talk about the word submission. It is getting under the mission of another. It is... I don't have a mission. If I have a mission, I'm laying that mission down so that I can do the mission of what someone else has said. What Adam and Eve were doing was not their own mission. It was submission. They were doing somebody else's mission. And so the devil comes along and says, how about we don't do submission? How about you be God? And you do your own mission. And thus, sin was born when Eve decided, you know what? I'm going to do my own mission. And then she decided, I want you to do it too. And she got her husband to submit to her mission. And thus we have the fall of man. And God says this, here's the deal. You got things all out of whack. And, and, and we had a beautiful system in place. And we had a mission. And we had, we had alignment on this mission. And we were all together on this mission until you wanted to do your own mission. 
By the way, this was not the original sin. This was not the original time that this happened. The original time that this happened was a, a fellow by the name of Lucifer who decided he did not want to follow that mission and wanted to start his own mission. And he's been using the same trick ever since then. And that is to get you and I on our own mission. And God's system is set up for us to submit, to get under his mission, and for us to lay down our mission and get under his mission. And so he established this. After the fall of man, after sin, he said, here's the deal. Because, because Eve, you wanted to have your own mission and you were susceptible, you, you submitted to the devil so that you don't submit to the devil again, so that you don't submit to the serpent, I want you to submit to your husband. And then he made the mission of Adam even tougher so that he would require more help from his wife. And then said, now I need you to submit to your husband. And this, in our society, is no way. No way. This is not right. We, that's, that's old, thousands of years ago. Our society has progressed since then. We don't need this kind of system anymore. We don't need God's order or roles or anything like that. Now, it's interesting. When we just described everyone in here talking about doing these challenges, what was actually happening was that God uh, was, was giving a mission, and I am, my role is to give out the mission. And then all of a sudden, many of you began to lay aside your own mission and submitted and got into submission and carried things out. And it changed your life and made you better. And there was, there was no benefit except for the joy of watching you grow for me. That same logic applies in a relationship. That same logic applies in a husband and wife relationship. That same logic applies in a family. The reason we don't see it that way is because we are looking at these scriptures through the eyes of society and not through the eyes of Christ. Because as you will remember, society sees everything as a pyramid. As a pyramid. You remember that? Right? We break out our dollar bills. What's on the back? It's a pyramid. Because at the top of the pyramid is the big dogs, right? That's the people. How many of you guys know that, that our society sees the pyramid at the top as the, as the, the elite of our, our society? They are better than all of us. They drive way better cars than all of us. They sleep in way better places than all of us. And they are different, aren't they? And then below them are people that are a little bit better, but help support them. And then below that is, is the middle class, and then below that is the lower class. And then you have the, the bottom class that is completely worthless, and all they're doing is just working and, and making all this move so that the people at the top can have that existence and that wonderful life. How many of you know the people at the top of that pyramid don't sleep in the same places as the people at the bottom of the pyramid? Because everything is about a pecking order, and it's all about climbing a ladder, and it's all about how high can we get on that pyramid. And when we see that pyramid, that reminds us of Egypt. That reminds us of the world system. Egypt was not God's place. That was the world's place. That was society building their own thing. When we go back even earlier than that in Genesis, uh, Genesis 10, Nimrod wanted to start his own thing. And so they started building, uh, they started building the Tower of Babel. Because they didn't want to fit in God's roles anymore. They said, God, I don't want to be in the role that you have for me. I want to do my own thing. And I don't want to be under your mission anymore. I want to start my own mission. Following in the footsteps of Lucifer. I want to start my own thing. I don't play by your roles anymore. I want to start my own mission. And so they see everything in power rankings. And so when, we, so when the society looks at the church and says, and looks at these verses that say, husbands, uh, love your wives, and wives, submit to your own husbands, they look at that and they go, ooh, that's bad. That's bad. Because, because what that looks like is uh, husbands at the top of the pyramid, wives at the bottom of the pyramid. 
And that is bad. That is wrong. That is not at all what the Bible is describing when it talks about these verses. So let's open up our, our Bibles to the book of Ephesians. I believe it's Ephesians, the fifth chapter. By the way, if you were expecting some cotton candy and cupcakes and not talking about real issues, you came to the wrong place. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. And husbands, you are to love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. And he who loves his wife, therefore loves himself. For no one has ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does to the church. For we are members of his body, and of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh." This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Paul does not use a building or a pyramid to describe how to view the situation. What does he use? We, we've, we talked about it, I think, Two, two weeks ago, Paul did this another time when he talked about um, the hierarchy, right? And, and that we are members of one another. And when, when there's a particular portion of the body that needs special attention, we give that particular part, right? What was that in reference to? The body. And so when, 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 when we're talking about... Um, a submission to 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 a husband we're actually not talking about in rankings like a pyramid but what we're talking about is as the body we don't see this as a pyramid we see it as a body and so he describes it just as Christ is the head of the church the two of them are interconnected and cannot be separated in the same way, a husband and wife is connected and cannot be separated. And so the head of the church does not look at himself and go, I'm better than the church. And the head of the church does not look at the church and go, stupid church. When's this church going to learn? No, quite the opposite. The head of the church says, I'm going to give my life to make sure that this church is everything that it can be. I'm going to literally lay down my life and die so that the church could be beautiful and perfect, spotless, without spot or wrinkle. And the whole, the whole, the whole idea of submitting is not a power situation, it's a role situation. Much in the same way that there was a mission, and I laid out the mission, and everyone was okay with that role of laying out the mission, and then everyone was okay with submitting to that mission and that role. It's the same logic that applies in a relationship. God gives a mission to a man. And the woman is there to help with that mission. And in order to do that, oftentimes, we have to lay down our own mission. We have to take our own missions and things that we, we thought, man, I want to do this, I want to do that. 
And what submission does is says, I'm going to lay down that mission because I'm going to get under the mission and carry out the mission of my husband, who, by the way, should be getting his mission from the father, who, by the way, his, with his mission, he then turns around and looks at that wife and says, this is my very body. If I don't have her, I can't carry out the mission. Therefore, I cherish her as myself because she is. And, and no role is greater than the other role. They're just roles. Just as my role is no greater than your role. But what the world wants to do is they want to take what we have and pervert it and say, oh no, the, 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 the church is, they're sexist and they believe that men are better than women and, and men can only do certain things and women can only do certain things. It's not a better or can and can't. It's simply a matter of roles. That's all it is. It's simple, a simple matter of roles and duties. Can men do things, uh, can women do things that men can do? Yes. I think women have proven that they can do the same things that men can do. No doubt about it. Doesn't mean it's their role. They've proven that they can do the things. Doesn't mean that they were designed to do those things. And then there are some times that women are given a mission. What happens if women are given a mission? They, they can sometimes be given a mission independent of a man. Don't get married. <laughs> Right? If God gives you a mission and you feel like, hey, yeah, I've got a mission that I'm going to go on my own, then you've got every right to carry that mission out. It just means that there's no reason for you to get married and then give up the mission that God gave you. So if God gives a woman a mission, don't get married. Carry out the mission. But if you prefer to get married, then you have to practice submission. Where we get into the mission. Because how crazy would it be if we, didn't, if we didn't all go on the same mission? How crazy would it be if we just started splintering off into all these different things? Which is, by the way, what we have done. Because we started seeing the scriptures through the worldview of society instead of the worldview of Christ. Look, no, no, no. You, there was, there's nothing in me that wanted to control your life or control your behavior. I simply wanted to see you succeed. And that is how the marriage relationship is designed as well. That a husband is not to control because I want to control your behaviors and I want you to do what I want. No, I want you to su succeed. And in order to do that, here's the mission. And so there's two things that Paul constantly had to remind the church of. You know, it's not just found here uh, in Ephesians. It's also found in 1 Peter chapter 5. It's also found in Colossians chapter 3. And there, there are uh, other things all throughout the New Testament that are expressing that same sentiment. And, and what it comes down to, I love the way that Paul just describes this as being, as being part of the body. Listen. The head... is to, the, the very role of your head, your mind, is to, it, it is for the betterment, it is to make sure that the, the whole person is successful. And the body helps carry that out. And so how many of you know that sometimes your, your head, when it's in control, it will tell you to do things that are uncomfortable for the body, but are for the betterment of the body? Like exercise. I mean, your head has told your body to exercise before. Yeah. Wow, every one of us, every one of us, our heads have said, uh, dude, I think you need to start exercising. <laughs> but what does the body say? The body says, yeah, I've got my own mission. <laughs> it involves some Oreos and some ice cream. And watching TV. And that is a natural mission, which is what requires submission. When the body doesn't want to do what the head is saying, no, this is good for the body. And the body says, I don't want to. That sounds uncomfortable. That's when submission is required. Because it's for the betterment of the body. And sometimes, 
How many of you know that our bodies take control? And before long, the head is now submitting to the body instead of the body submitting to the head, and things can get very disproportionate. And it's actually not good for the body. It ends up being bad for the body. There are, there are things that are broken in my body because the body took control. There are things that don't look right and work right in me because the body took control. Because my head submitted to the body and said, ah, we'll do it your way. Oreos does sound better. The same can be true in a relationship and the same is true in the church. Because Paul said it this way, look, you know, these are, these are the roles. These are the roles. These are what, the way God designed it. It could have been flip-flop. It could have been made either way. But here's the deal. God looked at the situation, and he didn't look and go, okay, um, the man has to be like this, the woman has to be like this, and the, it has to be this way, and the man has to look like this, and the woman like... He, he looked at the mission and said, because of the mission, I need the...